We've done a version of this show before where we talk about social media and social media as related to grief. But I, I, there's a little twist in there that I wanted to talk about because it keeps coming up with us with our clients. And it's something that we call the digital goodbye. We can lose our loved one and they can leave this earth physically, but their social media imprint lives on. Their social media imprint lives on. And so a lot of times it's hard to talk about um, that constant reminder that you're getting with those, um, I don't even know what they're called, the yearly updates or the reminders, your yeah. Facebook post reminders, and the you uh, you screenshotted a text and then you see that text that you sent them is still stuck in there or it's, it shows up every now and then. Um, I've, I've talked a lot about uh, after Donovan died and my phone being automatically just going to military time and me not knowing what time it was because my phone was stuck on military time and it just, that digital imprint that just keeps happening. Um, there's a lot of reminders in my phone that come up and those, they kill, they, they, they're like the knife being turned in your heart when you see those reminders. But one specifically, and this is something that you and I shared recently, is that um, for me, I wanted to keep my dad's name in the phone. So I wanted to keep it. And I actually had it as daddy, cause that's what I called him. So I had daddy and then I had his phone number. But because more people reached out to our parents through our dad's phone, we made the decision to delete, to turn off our mother's phone and give her his phone number because everybody had that phone number. They used it on all their medical records, on all their tax records, on everything was always, was listed his cell phone. They didn't have a, a house phone. But when she would call me, it would just show up, daddy. And it always made my heart leap. Mm -hmm. It like literally took a, a jump. My heart like leaped into my throat and I hated that feeling. And so I just changed it. And it was sad. I didn't want to change it because I wanted that to stay there, but it was really sad. But for you, you never changed it. I never changed it. It still says dad when she calls. <laughs> <laughs> but in the beginning, you, that doesn't feel like. In the beginning, I had that reaction because um, it's like, you know, you have a moment of, you know, laps, you're like, what, what, but I wanted, I wanted to keep that connection. And so for me, it was, it was like a connection, still, still a connection to him. So it wasn't painful. It wasn't painful. Um, I didn't keep, we didn't keep Donovan's phone number. You we gave the phone to Jordan, but, um, he got a new phone number. Oh, okay. So we didn't keep Donovan's phone number. I don't think I would have had that same reaction if I would have let Jordan keep Donovan's cell phone number and him call me and it come up as Donovan. That would freak me out. That would have been, yeah. I would not have had the same reaction as our dad's number. But so we, a, we changed oh, it. I'm sorry, I jumped over. Okay. There was one point in time where your iCloud connected to Donovan's. My, uh, I went, we got a new phone. Lewis and I got new phones. And some kind of way in the transferring of the information, and I don't know how this happened because Donovan and I did not have a, this, uh, we did not share an account. He had his own account. Um, I got his photo album. So when I opened up my pictures to check and make sure all my pictures were there, I had a bunch of pictures that were all Donovan's from his photo album. That was really weird. That was freaky. That was weird. Did that, 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 that cause a, a, a grieving? No, I was actually happy to have those pictures, oh. you know, because it was like more pictures of him that than I had already because I had lost a couple phones in between. Um, I think I, you know, I had lost a lot of pictures. So now I had a bunch of pictures of him. So I was actually happy about that. Um, one time, I don't know how this happened either. And I think all of this is, is uh, winks from heaven is what I call them. They're winks from heaven. For me, because of the place I'm in now, I look at this and I smile. But for other people, if I was in the yeah. middle of my, uh, you know, brokenness, it would not be received the same. But Donovan, I mean, um, Jordan's profile picture when he called my phone, 
changed from him to a picture of me and Donovan one day. And he called me and I was like, I answered the phone because it was a picture that I would have for Donovan. And I, I said, did, why did you change your profile picture? And Jordan said, I didn't. And I was like, oh my God, that was weird. It was really yeah. weird. But it was after a day that you and I had done something really profound with um, grief work. And I just saw that as Donovan coming through to just always reaffirm we're, we were called to do this for a reason. And so that's how I see it. A lot of people, when you're not in that, when you haven't done a lot of your healing work, you doesn't, it's not received that way. It is that knife totally twisting in your heart and more stab wounds added in. <laughs> yeah. And it can break you and send you into bed for a couple of days. It could send Completely. you, it can send you off the track of your grieving, your grief healing. Because for most grievers in the beginning, they avoid the photos of their loved one because they, they tell us all the time, I can't even look at pictures of her. Yeah. That's yeah. one of the ways that we know the healing is absolutely taking place. When you can look at that photo and there's love in your heart or joy in your heart, or you enjoy that photo, that's a sign of true healing. Uh, so for most people, they can't even look at the photos. Right. So a lot of people will um, avoid their, their loved one's social media account. They won't even go to the account. They won't look at it. But, you know, when you have that social media account, like when Donovan has that social media account, people are posting on Donovan's page and then you're getting these alerts about it. Yeah. So there's yep. a constant reminder there. So that's digital grief. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. One of the things that I did in the beginning was I used to stalk his page. Like Austin, when he passed away, it was just the very beginning. Uh, that's back when Facebook was the Facebook. When Austin away. <laughs> so he didn't have a digital footprint other than the pictures that I have or uh, posted of him. Like him personally didn't have, he didn't have one. But Donovan had a big one. He had an Instagram, he had a Snapchat, he had a uh, Facebook. So there were reminders and things coming up all the time. And the situation that we have uh, which I've shared about, we've shared about in other podcasts is the, um, someone took it upon themselves to memorialize his page. So now I'm always so fearful of losing my social media account and having to create a new one. Cause I'll never be able to add him as a friend again. That power was stripped away from me. So yeah. I'll, if I lose my Facebook, if I get hacked and, you know, so I, I, I try to be very careful so that I don't get in a position to have to lose my Facebook and then lose his page. That would be, that would be a grieving experience. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. So let's talk about some of the things that um, grievers can do. You have the choice of whether to look at that page or not look at the page. You have the choice. You have the choice of whether to memorialize the page or not. You have the choice of whether to take the phone number out of your phone change it to something else or just remove that phone number altogether. Yeah. And absolutely trying to make those choices could be um, devastating. I wouldn't do anything on impulse. I exactly. would not because you will regret it. There's yeah. ways to silence the notifications. So then you won't yes. get notified every time something comes in. You can actually silence someone's page for 30 days at a time, I think. Um, so you don't see anything from that page or get posted. I would do those before making any final steps because you will, if you do something impulsively later, when you get that healing, you're going to want to look at the pictures. You're going to want to have the reminders. I love to get the reminders now because I always remember what a character Donovan was and how goofy he was. And like some of my favorite pictures are the ones of him dancing at Britney's wedding. So yeah. it's like, those are always good when those come up. So yeah, yeah, I would, I would hate not to see those anymore. Um, so you're going along your day, you get a notification, you all pick up your phone and all of a sudden you see your son dancing at a wedding and your heart jumps into your throat. The very next thing I want you to do is take a deep breath. If you can continue looking at the picture for one second, and then I want you to identify what emotion is coming up for you. That's the number one thing you have to do. What emotion is this? I'm scared. <gasps> Fear. 
And then what's right under the fear? Oh, sad. And then you hold on to that sad for as long as you can and look at the picture for as long as you can. Let that experience of what's happening just be there. Don't try to push that phone away. Don't be me and turn the phone away. Sit there for one, one minute is all I'm asking you is sit in it for one minute and let it just be there and breathe it in. Because the next time it happens to you, it's gonna be a little bit easier if you allow the pain to be there. Pain equals healthy. It's healthy to feel this pain. Don't try to push it away. Yeah, I used to um, talk. I just started talking like I was talking to Donovan. And I think that that, and I, I, because I went into such a dark place and not communicating, I wasn't being honest with you. I wasn't being honest with Lewis. Um, but when I talked to Donovan, I was speaking my truth. And I think that helped because I would connect to it, but then say to him, I miss you so much. I can't believe you left me. Like, and then that, cause that's really what I was holding in and holding back. And, um, it helped slowly, not all at once, but it, in those moments when you allow it and you're speaking in your truth, it's helpful. The digital footprint is real. Mm -hmm. There is no way of getting around it. You know, I believe that grieving probably, yeah, it, I, we have the perfect example. Grieving like when Austin died was so much different because of the digital footprint. You didn't have that, um, the pain and the suffering. But you know what is cool right now for you and I is like we're in a group text with all of our sisters and our nieces and for one of them to share, hey, look at this photo that came up for me. And it's a picture of Austin or they just stick that Austin picture in there. It's like, and then everybody starts chiming in and telling what they were doing that day and what happened and why he looks so funny with that hat on. And we all start talking about it. It is like us keeping him alive. So yes, the digital footprint, the grief, the digital grief print does two things. It's painful. It helps with the healing, but at some point it's going to be the joy and the love that you still have. Continue that person. Yeah. And it's hard to see that in the beginning. Yeah. And that, that's why, and you said this, I mean, from the very first podcast, our grief is our love. Yeah. Well, that is why it hurts so much. We don't have anywhere to put it anymore. When yeah. you had Sharon here and she was your person and you got to have those good heartfelt uh, bestie to bestie conversation and you hang up that phone. And then after that, you don't have anywhere to go yeah. with those conversations. But now it's like when you get the memories up and it's you and her, you get to feel that like, that's right. We had some good times Sharon. Yeah. We really did because you're in a different headspace. Oh yeah, absolutely. One of the things that I received as a gift from Sharon's sister-in-law, just after she died, she sent me a flower arrangement and she had a personalized picture placed around the face and it was a picture of Sharon and I at uh Brittany my daughter Brittany's engagement party and because we were always together and we loved our kids equally we would always give advice to our kids and we hung out with us she had three children I had two and I have three and we got on I have two I have three and we got involved in all of them I have two girls we were sitting on a bench and Brittany was sharing her story about how she was surprised at the engagement. And she and I were both looking up <laughs> with this love for Brittany and this experience. Like Brittany was standing up sharing and she and I were both looking up and someone took our photo. And it's just the two of us together. It's as if we were the parents of this child. <laughs> <laughs> and we were just like loving her and looking up at her. When that flower arrangement came and that photo was first on there, it was hard. I peeled it off. I was able to peel it off and I stuck it on a pegboard in my pantry. And I would walk by for months and avoid that photo. It was there, but I would avoid it. And I remember one day just stopping and staring at it and just taking it in and thinking about that moment and remembering that moment of her and I together and just being filled with love. Yeah, and that's why we don't want to get rid of the digital footprint, the digital grief footprint too fast, because right. it takes 
it plays a major part in our healing and we can't just get rid of it. And it's also an indicator if you're five years in, 10, 20 years in, and you're still having that, you want to silence it or you want to don't want to see it. That's a sign you're not in your healing, in the healing place you should be in. At that game, at that late in the game, you should not have the amount of pain you had in the beginning. And it's an indicator that you need, there's some work that needs to be done. Yeah, so true. Friends, we really wanna encourage you, don't get rid of anything. You don't have to look at it. You do not have to look at it. You don't have to share those posts on your Facebook right now. Take the time that you need, but remember, don't get rid of anything that you will regret and that yeah. you can't get rid of. Yeah. We want to act impulsively because the pain is so unbearable, but try to resist those urges and just keep muting them. I think it's called muting when you put them on pause or whatever, but um, just keep doing that for as long as you can until you get to the moment where you look at it and you feel the joy and the love and the memory comes back in detail and it doesn't tear you down. It makes you smile because that's the goal. So, hey, friends, we love a sitting with grievers and working with grievers. And the next best thing for you to do, if you want more of us on a daily basis, is to join our Facebook group. The link is in the uh, bio here. Just click on the link and join the Facebook group. We would love to have you be a guest there and just be hanging out with other grievers. who are trying to figure out how to navigate through this grieving process. Bye, friends. Thank you. Bye.